Distributing Gifts for the Summit, Mr. Ashish Kundraji, Principal Secretary and Transport Commissioner, Government of Delhi. A very warm welcome to you, sir. I also have the proud privilege in inviting our distinguished dignitary, Sri Vinay Kumar Singh, Managing Director, NCRTC. A very warm welcome to you, sir. May I also invite Mrs. Mamta Shah, CEO and Managing Editor, Urban Infra Group Publications, to kindly take her place on the stage. Namaskar and good morning. A very warm welcome to the second edition of Urban Infra Business Summit and Awards 2022, which are being presented by the Urban Infra Group. The Urban Infra Group is the youngest and the only public relations media and research company specialized in urban infrastructure sector. Working closely with the government bodies, transport planning departments, planning commissions, policy makers, private companies, regulators, social enterprises, and corporate and trade associations. The experience has seen an ensemble wide-ranging coalitions and positions, our clients at the forefront of the debate, protecting them in times of crisis, raising their profile, and helping them enter new markets. At Urban Infra Communication, we are proud of the quality and creativity of our corporate communications and public relations services, and we have simplified timely and effective support to clients on the most challenging and sensitive of briefs. We have worked with clients of all sizes across a diverse range of modes, providing them with high-level political and media counsel and media relations issues and crisis management, digital marketing services, planning permissions, advice, social media, and integrated campaign strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, our publications are Urban Trust, which is a news portal, Urban Transport Infrastructure, the bi-monthly magazine, Metro Rail Today, which also is a news portal, and Metro Rail Today. And ladies and gentlemen, the summit today is associated with Urban Transport News and Metro Rail Today, and supported by Indian Metro Rail Organization, Railway, and Rail Land Development Authority. And may I now request Ms. Mamta Shah, CEO and Managing Editor, Urban Ifra Group Publications, to kindly welcome our Honorable Chief Guest, Sri Ashish Kundraji, with a floral bouquet. A very warm welcome to you, sir. We also welcome with a floral bouquet, Sri Vinay Kumar, NCRTC. A very warm welcome to you, sir. And ladies and gentlemen, and every auspicious occasion by lighting the ceremonial lamp and invoking the gods and goddesses and seeking their blessings to guide us for the success of our endeavors. We now begin the proceedings of the summit and awards by lighting the ceremonial lamp. And I would request our dignitaries on the stage to kindly do the honors of lighting the ceremonial lamp and formally inaugurating the Urban Infra 2022 Summit and Awards. And let's put our hands together on the ceremonial inauguration of the Summit and Awards. Thank you very much indeed for kindly doing the honors. Thank you very much indeed, ma'am. And ladies and gentlemen, as a mark of respect to our great nation, may I request everybody to kindly rise for the national anthem.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I invite Ms. Himani Gupta, Vice President Marketing, Urban Infra Group, to kindly begin the proceedings of the summit with her welcome address. Let's put our hands together to welcome. Hi, good morning. A very pleasant morning to all of you. And a very warm welcome to the second Urban Infra Business Summit and Awards 2022. Firstly, I would like to thank each one of you for becoming a part of this grand event and uh, with your presence. I, Himani Gupta, Vice President of Urban Infra Group, on the behalf of entire team, wants to say, uh, sincerely acknowledge the efforts of those who came forward and contributed, contributed towards the success of this grand event. Uh, this, uh, it has not only been just a mere conference happening over the years, but has become almost like a festival where people interact and share their uh, views and interact with each other and also take back some knowledge with them uh, into the corporate world. So uh, we today also have among us an exceptional chief guest, Mr. Shri Ashish Kundraji, Principal Secretary and Transport Commissioner, Government of Delhi. Thank you, sir, for coming. Who will guide us towards our goal more decisively and open in front of us new horizons? The theme of this event is India at 75, progress of rails, metros, and uh, transportation and urban infrastructure sectors in India. So the uh, event is divided into two parts. One uh, is the where uh, uh, various presentations and plenary sessions and speeches uh, by the industry leaders. And second, we will celebrate the grand award ceremony to recognize the industry leaders. So uh, I will take, uh, I will need, uh, I will not take your more time and I will take over to Ms. Sapna Gupta. And please enjoy the event, thank you. Thank you very much indeed for those warm words of welcome. And now ladies and gentlemen, for the keynote, address on role of regional rapid transit system in urban and regional development of India. I have the proud privilege in inviting our eminent speaker, Mr. Vinay Kumar Singh, Managing Director, NCRTC. Let's put our hands together to welcome him. A very good morning to all. Mr. Ashish Kundra, the Transport Commissioner and Principal Secretary Transport Government of Delhi, dignitaries on the dais and in the audience, friends, ladies and gentlemen. I think, oh, see this particular address will get assisted by a uh, presentation also will be easier to appreciate the role of regional rapid transit system in the transport of NCR. So uh, see, we, all of us, we know that the population of Delhi is increasing by leaps and bounds. Similarly, the use of private vehicle, this is also exponentially increasing. See, the central government and the state government both are trying to reduce the dependence on <coughs> private vehicles. My colleague Mr. Kundra is trying and he has shown very good results in last few years in terms of increasing the number of buses, electric buses particularly, in the, uh, for the public transport in Delhi. The, both these governments have also come jointly for this project of regional rapid transit system. We know that the moment uh, there is a participation of private vehicle in the transport sector, it creates a lot of problem. In Delhi, we have witnessed in last 20 years the growth of private vehicles, leading to a lot of congestion, pollution, accidents, and a lot many other economic costs related with that. See, if uh, transport is not able to support the economy, then it becomes a drag on the economy. There is a lot of cost which economy pays in terms of congestion penalty on the economy. So the effort is to 
fill the gap which a rail based transport should have provided which has been the international experience till now see all the big cities the metropolitan cities across the world they have three kinds of systems the uh, national systems national transport system whether it is through by air or through a railway system the other one is intercity commuter system then intracity commuter system and last mile connectivity here in ncr what we are missing is a intercity commuter system and that to a seamless commuter system which can provide transport to daily commuters especially the passengers from one city to another to fill this gap the rrts has been planned it is a joint venture between central government and the concerned states and this is one project which will finally integrate the ncr the way it has been envisioned it is not that just by saying that we are ncr it will become ncr till we have a, a seamless transport between various towns and cities of ncr so there are various similar systems which have been created implemented across the world the one which is very similar to what we are doing in delhi is paris paris example where the, there there is a rr system now there is a grand paris system which is also coming up so there are train lines which have 100 150 kilometers going into the uh, outside city and linking to the uh, local metro system and last mile connectivity is provided by bus systems the uh, intermediate transport or various other kinds of two wheelers four wheeler kind of connectivities now the this creates a network of networks so that people can seamlessly move from one system to another this is what is lacking and we have to do that when delhi metro came about 20 years back it provided us a very reliable safe and comfortable mode of transport but that was intracity so few there are few corridors which go beyond delhi also but that has a speed restriction in the sense that the average speed in a metro is around 32 to 32 uh, 32 to 35 kilometers maximum now if you see this particular line delhi today has a about diameter of 60 kilometers so that means from the center of delhi in one hour we can reach the uh, end of the borders of the delhi but with rrts so from the center of the delhi you can go up to about 100 kilometers in one hour which is almost the size of ncr so rrts will provide about one hour drive one hour journey time from center of the city to the end of the ncr so that is the objective of having this system to start with uh, we have three corridors uh, which are called the priority corridor there will be finally about 8 to 10 corridors in the phase 2 and 3 but we are starting with three priority corridors each about 100 120 kilometers which can be traveled in one hour time because the average time of movement is a uh, is anything between uh, 90 to 100 km per hour now what we are doing because uh, due to time limitation i'll keep my discussion today limited to one particular issue that is multimodal integration and intermodal uh, movement seamless intermodal movement now if you see this diagram shows what is the role of rrts in the whole transport business of ncr so we provide the main backbone because it is a high throughput system high speed system we will be the main transport backbone for passenger traffic in the ncr and each station will have very intensive uh, linkages with the nearby other modes of transport let us say delhi metro or indian railway stations or airport or bus stations so in delhi there are three stations out of which two are at isbts at both these location there are uh, delhi metro stations which are seamlessly connected so we are connecting with almost all modes of transport as it can be seen on the left hand side of this particular picture 
on each of these stations and then a high speed uh, passenger backbone a dedicated backbone for high speed movement safe movement reliable movement punctual movement now if we see what are these locations so you will be happy to know that almost out of seven lines out of eight lines seven lines are linked with rts of delhi metro so this linkages we are giving either one station on each corridor or maybe more than one stations on the corridor delhi metro here is a list where if you see almost all important junctions we are covering on these three pre, uh, priority corridors indian railway we are providing linkages at anand vihar new delhi old delhi through metro anand vihar is a direct connectivity and nizamuddin is a direct connectivity but new delhi and ondar through a seven no not seven from an uh, international airport so direct linkage from all the three corridors so people can travel within one hour from a distance which is almost like 100 kilometers away from delhi to a station seamlessly i would like to share one thing with you the the potential of this indira gandhi international airport is not able to be achieved by the civil aviation due to congestion on the feeding roads the uh, the road connectivity which is available as of today will not be able to allow airport to use its full capacity of about 10 crore passengers per year so our rts kind of system which can have almost like 60000 passengers per direction per hour can easily help the airport to achieve that potential so there are various facilitation which rts will be doing uh, indian railways we are linking we are linking the isbts anand vihar and isbt <laughs> sarai kalekha in the on the third corridor we will be linking the morigate isbt our station will be next to uh, morigate isbt so there is a very very extensive as we enter into uh, up almost every town which is very closely interlinked with the uh, bus stations so this is one uh, example at sarai kalekha where we are linking with the delhi metro station and uh, i don't know if i have a pointer and uh, metro station then uh, indian railway station niyamuddin station thank you so this is indian railway station this is uh, delhi metro station this is rts station all three corridors of uh, rts will be merging here the uh, trains can seamlessly move from one st uh, one corridor to another corridor so the passenger have not to change a train and we are in discussion with the uh, government of delhi where if we can construct a isbt here then it brings the isbt also very close to delhi metro rts and uh, indian railway station yamudin similarly at anand vihar anand vihar also if you see this is indian railway station this is our isbt of delhi on this side is a bus stand of up government we are just in between here so rts station is at the center of the this particular transport hub which will facilitate very close multimodal integration with the other modes of transport the uh, commuters will not have to move on the road we can completely segregate the pedestrians from the motorized transport so we will provide the escalators lift to link with the uh, metro station as well as from indian railway station on the other side this fob will get connected so that complete pedestrian movement can be segregated from the uh, motorized movement now in merit also what we are doing we are linking with the uh, metro in fact we have subsumed the metro in merit in the rts system so uh, trains can the rts trains will be stopping at uh, sorry rts is trains will be stations in merit whereas there is a uh, local transit service which will be operating on our own um, infrastructure there will be 13 stations and people can seamlessly <coughs> from local transit 
to RRTS. Now for integration, the next step of integration is NCMC card. So that people who are using public transport, not only that physically they can seamlessly move from one uh, mode of transport to another, but the payment uh, method also is common. DTC is also already has implemented it. Delhi Metro is implementing it in a big way and we will be doing the NCMC card from the day one. So that means the same card we can use on Delhi Metro, on RRTS and DTC so that people can seamlessly move. It, is, it, will, it will make uh, their tra public transport much more easier to handle. So without going in the other issues which we are doing, so I thought it would be a good idea to share with all of you what we are doing in multimodal integration and inter, inter uh, corridor transfer of trains <coughs> on RRTS. Other than that, we are doing some uh, creating some centralities along the corridor where we'll create facilities which can be used by commuters for ease of doing business, for ease of living. And this is how the system will create a lot of decentralized economic nodes. So there will be economic activity around all these stations which are spaced at about 5 to 7 kilometers. And in various towns, there will be centralities which can be used by commuters because it is a fast system. People can move from one station to another and use those facilities. I think this is all which I wanted to uh, discuss with you and we'll have some more uh, use of the same system. We'll be using the system during the non-peak hours for moving the white goods and perishables in Delhi. That will reduce the number of vehicles, especially the trucks entering into Delhi. So thank you very much for your attention and time. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for that informative presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, before we move ahead, may I also invite on stage our uh, eminent speaker, Professor Dr. Surbhi Singh. She's from GL Bajaj Institute of Management and Research. And I would request Ms. Mamta Shah to kindly welcome Professor Dr. Surbhi Singh with the floral bouquet. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. You may kindly grace the stage, take a seat. And for the next keynote address, we would like to invite our honorable chief guest, Sri Ashish Kundraji, Principal Secretary and Transport Commissioner, Government of Delhi. And today he's going to speak on making Delhi a role model for the sustainable transportation system in India. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hand up. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Shri Vinay Kumar uh, Ji, MD of NCRTC, organizers of the event, um, uh, Professor Mamta, uh, I didn't get your name. The person. Um, and uh, the guests in the audience, uh, thank you very much for this session in the morning. I think it is a uh, rather difficult time to be talking about sustainable transport because of the pollution outside, but in a way it is the Let's say it's an opportune time. So I, uh, the, uh, my uh, colleague here uh, has uh, laid out a very impressive blueprint of how regional connectivity will improve. And I think it's a fantastic job that they are doing. And um, hopefully when this, uh, the merit line starts, a lot of traffic which comes into Delhi other than that side uh, will in a way ease out. And um, we'll see also a decongestion of the city. Some people will try to start living in merit and commuting on onto this uh, uh, framework. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start on the other end of the spectrum, which is the uh, personal transport, and uh, then come to public transport. Pu personal transport in Delhi, uh, we have something like uh, uh, 1.3 crore registered vehicles in Delhi. Uh, now two crores, that's a huge number. Uh, no other city in India has these kind of uh, vehicle numbers. And if we add up which are coming from the satellite towns, it's, it's the load is surely unsustainable. Out of these 1.3 crore vehicles, roughly about 50 lakh are uh, those which are 10 year old diesel vehicles or 15 year old petrol, more than 15 year old petrol vehicles. Now, while we have deregistered all of them, but the fact of the matter is that 
some of them still might be plying on the roads of delhi that is one part two third of this 1.3 crore vehicles are two wheelers now uh, in the matrix of what we are trying to do uh, first of all we are trying to move to uh, clean fuel uh, technologies uh, so which means we are encouraging the use of uh, bs6 uh, cng and electric so if i just take these three fuel types uh, of the active registered vehicles in delhi which is about 80 lakhs to 30% are already uh, in the clean fuel space which means th- increasingly uh, the number of clean fuel technology based vehicles is increasing in delhi we have given a major push to electric mobility uh, in the personal space and i am happy to share that um, the numbers this year are very very encouraging more than 10% of uh, newly registered vehicles are electric in fact the numbers in october are touching 11% uh, and two wheelers is the fastest growing segment unlike what it was a year ago when e rickshaws were the main segment of growth in electric mobility so which is very heartening uh, and i think uh, there's lot of room for improvement and uh, uptake of electric mobility now the only uh, so we have a purchase incentive matrix we have a digital framework in which we give subsidies to people who buy electric vehicles and we have given mandates uh, that within a week of purchase the subsidy would be disbursed and fortunately we have been able to stick to that promise and this digital architecture which we have created of subsidy disbursement is working quite well the next area of focus for us is the charging infrastructure so uh, we have recently launched a charging action plan where we have said that 18000 charging points will be established across the city by 2025 now this will be a mix of fast chargers slow chargers and battery swapping infrastructure as we talk we have 3000 charging points in the city and these numbers are growing very fast so in the two wheeler and three wheeler space i expect that the battery swapping um uh, model is going to be the model which will accelerate the uptake of uh, uh, electric mobility in the in the coming uh, couple of years having said that we are also trying to give a push to the regulators um, uh, sorry a regulatory push to the aggregators um, a large number of fleet on the streets of delhi is because of ride hailing companies food delivery companies e-commerce companies Uh, and typically these uh, people who are on the road they are gig economy workers who are using second hand third hand kind of vehicles which are usually very polluting so uh, we are in a very advanced stage of notifying rules which will be the regulatory framework for aggregators which have mandates for transitioning to electric mobility year on year uh, with the ultimate goal that by 2030 in delhi all such companies whether it is ola and uber of the world or zomato swiggy of the world or amazon etc their fleet drivers will ride only electric vehicles by 2030 so that's the second policy push that we are giving how let's move to the space of public transit and um, today uh, delhi metro carries something like uh, uh, 4 million uh, passengers every day and the bus system also carries roughly the same number of passenger trips every day uh, and these are huge numbers but i think uh, there is a lot of scope in improvement of our uh, bus transit system particularly and um, the last time we had a major induction of bus fleet in delhi was during the commonwealth games when uh, these red buses they came the low floor cng buses and now we are in the process of uh, the next round of induction we already have 300 electric buses in our fleet we have placed firm orders for another 1500 and we have floated bids for another 4000 electric buses uh, and then another bid is coming up for 2000 plus electric buses so short point our goal is by 2025 80% of our bus fleet uh, should be electric um now having said that uh the main thing is how do we make uh bus travel a cool affair so if you compare the metro rider vis-a-vis the bus rider uh the average uh, bus rider is someone 
who has no other recourse to any kind of transport and is looking at a cheap solution for uh, transport their regular commuters and uh, in case of metro uh, a lot of people who were earlier using let's say their own personal two wheelers etc they have made a shift because i think one defining difference was the predictability of service so the metro line uh, you know okay this train is going to start at 9 o'clock it will start at 9 o'clock in case of buses um, that certainty and predictability because of traffic variation uh, is not there but what we have done to overcome that recently we have launched this uh, mobile app called one delhi uh, which gives you live gps feed of all buses in delhi so if you are standing at uh, any bus stop and you want to let's say from here go to connaught place uh, you'll you'll find out which is the nearest bus which is coming to your bus stop and in how much time so uh, i think that will be a significant step towards uh, increased adoption of bus travel in delhi but we are not stopping there we are also now coming up with um, another scheme called the premium bus aggregator scheme so uh, which means we are trying to say that uh, private investors will put their money buy buses run buses uh, uh, which are app based uh, services uh, in delhi uh, which have push back seats and all of that and deregulated fares so people of delhi uh, you know professionals and others they are willing to pay higher for a better quality service if there is one so uh, i think once this is launched uh, so imagine that from from the proximity of your home uh, you get a point to point almost a point to point service to your office uh, why won't anybody do it i mean when we travel abroad all of us hop on to the london bus service but here i don't know how many have actually traveled on dtc buses and uh, there is a certain degree of hesitation in doing so so i hope uh, I, the last thing which i want to touch upon is the multimodal integration which uh, vinay ji also mentioned and uh, unfortunately like most things in india uh, you know we have been working in a uh, compartment so uh, delhi metro has its own network they plan it in a certain fashion the dtc has its own network they plan it in a certain fashion and there is no uh, meeting point uh, so uh, what we have done very recently we have had a dialogue with delhi metro uh, so they started this last mile uh, bus service which are these smaller buses electric buses they only had 100 of them we are taking over those buses in dtc and uh, we are adding another 400 buses which will basically be neighborhood bus service which means small buses let's say moving around in dwarka catchment area and connecting to the dwarka metro station uh, so that people have uh, easy connectivity from their home to the metro similarly metro to their workplace uh, or metro to the commercial area whatever it is so i i hope with a mix of these measures that we are trying to implement we'll see a greater use uh, of public transport without which um, the local sources of pollution as we talk about the vehicular uh, pollution uh we'll continue to and then you know we come out with this bandaid solutions uh for a problem which is endemic and i think uh, that that really is not the approach which we should adopt but we should look at something which is sustainable and in the long run will make uh, a game changing difference in the city so thank you very much for being patient and listening to me thank you very much indeed sir for that keynote address and now ladies and gentlemen for the presentation on transforming transport infrastructure with sustainable marketing may i invite professor dr surbhi singh she is with gl bajaj institute of management and research so ladies and gentlemen please put your hands together to welcome so good morning everyone so today uh, respected uh, mr vinay ji mr ashish ji and of course miss mamta who is the organizer of this uh, summit so being a academician i just wanted to give some of the reflections on the transport infrastructure which we are actually uh, having in our country 
and how sustainable marketing can actually transform the whole transport infrastructure that I'll be trying to uh, present. So I'll request the organizing committee to kindly play the slide if it is possible so that everyone can actually see the recommendation which I have tried to make. So uh, if I talk about transport infrastructure, because I was just hearing Mr. Ashish also, he's talking about electric mobility, that how uh, you know the government is making a lot of efforts to bring the electric mobility services in our country. And at NCR and Delhi level, he has actually tried to emphasize. And in fact, he also spoke about one daily app, which is really very, very exciting because nowadays NHAI also has already become artificial intelligence enabled and a lot of connectivity is already there in the transport infrastructure. Can we go to the next? Okay, maybe I have the slide. So these will be the contents of my presentation. So as you know, transport, because there may be many delegates who may be coming from different uh, industries or maybe some other academia also. So that's why I just want to introduce the transport infrastructure and how we define transport infrastructure. So transport infrastructure means that in any country, if the railways, roads, and coastal areas and whatever you know, uh, these kind of mobility services are developed. So these comes under the transport infrastructure. Now, why do we have to develop the transport infrastructure? Because we all are trying to avail the services of transport infrastructure only because we are here only because of the smooth movement of the transport. If the infrastructure is not good, if it is not going in a uh, integrated mode, as Mr. Ashish also quoted that, even Mr. Vinay also talked about how multimodal integration is so beneficial for the whole society. So definitely transport infrastructure, if it is integrated, it will definitely lead to a lot of uh, convenience and comfort for the commuters, daily commuters. And if I talk about the expansion <coughs> programs which we are running in our country, because we all know that our government is uh, making a lot of efforts in bringing a lot of different projects which are running in our country, like Bharat Mala, we know very well that lots of highways are being connected through that. And definitely lots of small towns in the UP also and in many of the states which are being connected through this project. So it is really a very, very appreciable uh, effort by the government of, our, uh, government of India. Second, Sagar Mala. Sagar Mala is again a very, very important project of our country, which is running by the current government. And it is really trying to connect the different ports of our country. There are currently, we have 13 ports in our country. And if we compare with the US, because definitely we always try to compare with the developed countries only, and US has a lot of good, you can say, a very sound transport infrastructure, if I compare with our country. So infrastructure, if I talk about other programs, if we say we have a lot of transit mode, bus rapid transport systems also services which we have, then we have a lot of other kinds of integrated model systems which we have in the transport infrastructure. Now this is the state of our India where when we talk about the transport infrastructure. In India, if you see, if I talk about the freight, like uh, when we try to uh, transport the goods, you know, through the roads, we have maximum penetration through the roads. It means 75%, around 70% 70 or 70 to 75% is actually using the road traffic. So you can very well understand how, again, a very important challenge is for us that a lot of road uh, traffic is being consumed for these kind of freight carrying activities. Rail road is being consumed and we talk about the coastal, as you know, as you know that we don't have much of the penetration in the sea coastal uh, consumption. We are not carrying much freight to the sea areas. We have around 7% consumption only when I talk about India's state of uh, transport infrastructure. Now, if I compare with the developed economies like US, then we always tend to see, because again, a lot of expansion programs are there in our country, which are going on. That's a really, really very praiseworthy uh, thing. But yes, if I compare with the developed economy, because we are definitely uh, visualizing ourselves to be a trillion economy. So we have already aimed ourselves also to reach to the highest trillion economy, you know, we, which our government had already aimed at. So definitely, you know, there are some of the challenges which I would like to highlight. Before that, I would like you to see the state of infrastructure in USA. 
Now, if you if you see in USA, in USA, they have around 75% uh, you know freight which is being carried through the sea, sea areas. It means that their coastal ports are very much developed. And of course, if I see the airports also, because definitely freights are carried through the air services also, airline services also, they are also very much you know well developed in that. So again, if I s compare with these type of developed economies, we are actually in the 19th position. If I see the airport, you know, infrastructure, and if I see the railroad in you know, a road infrastructure, we are in the 119th position as compared to US. So again, India is very much behind, and I, I think there are lots of challenges we have to face. So being an academician, I would definitely like our, uh, you know, a lot of honorary members are here from the transport infrastructure, I would request also that the recommendation which I have made that they, they, they must work on these areas, you know. I know they are very much uh, sound in their uh, respective uh, areas, but I would definitely, definitely like to put some recommendations. Now, why I have tried to integrate with the sustainable marketing, because sustainable marketing is the marketing which basically tries to create, communicate, and deliver the value by creating the natural resources, you know, we have to make use of the natural resources. We are emphasizing more on the electric mobility services. We have also tried to develop the logistic services also through the electric mobility. And we know very well the state of our country that we don't have much uh, generation of the electricity through the electric. So we have still, uh, we are still lagging behind. Lot of solar energies are being used. They are being developed also by the government of India so that the mo more consumption services can be produced so that we can make use of these sustainable you know, products for, you can say, improving the transport infrastructure. Because unless and until we have these kind of natural resources, which we call it a renewable energy, we cannot actually transform the transport infrastructure. So that's also very, very important. So why, uh, if you see sustainable marketing, basically the main aim of sustainable marketing is to connect the planet with people and profit because generally organizations they are chasing profit and they are serving the planet but somewhere the you know somewhere people are neglected somewhere you know the whole planet is neglected somewhere environment is neglected so here the main purpose is to safeguard the environment of our country and if we keep producing electric buses cars and all maybe we are still uh, you know lagging behind you know preparing or planning a very chalked kind of a structured plan, a program for our country, which I really found because I was just going through a lot of researches also. And uh, I saw that there are many of the programs which are still not integrated. Like uh, as far as the bus rapid transport system, if you can see, we know that there are some of the glimpses which I would like to give you. In Jakarta, we have a, you know, uh, they have a very good bus transport uh, rapid system, BRTS which is considered to be a very, very uh, efficient, energy efficient city. Because they are, uh, BRTS, they are running, uh, spanning around to 50 kilometers. In India, if I talk about, we have till 109 kilometers BRTS, and still we are struggling with the BRTS system. BRTS is bus rapid transport system, which are actually connecting with various small towns and you know cities. So again, this poses a big question, that maybe somewhere we are not able to implement fully the efficiency of the energies which we are producing. Then again, apart from this, we have a lot of different cities which are giving again a big challenge that Singapore is again considered to be a very, um, you can say, carbon emission free city, uh, free country also. So we also have to develop some cities which can be called uh, carbon emission f uh, free con uh, countries. And for that purpose, we need to prepare or maybe we need to bring some of the technology also which can actually capture these kind of pollution uh, components. Now these are the challenges which we have because we know that in our country we have a uh, lot of connectivity issues are there because still so small towns don't have that kind of infrastructure although government is already doing it through the Bharat Mala projects. But Sagar Mala project it has to be uh, strengthened a lot because we have uh, very less connectivity as far as the ports are concerned and that is why transportation of freight is not taking place. So they are, as I told you, they are at 7% only as per the current data. And we have around 17% freight which is carrying through the railroads in our country. And 75%, around 70 to 75% freight is carried through the roads. So you can very well understand how much traffic management on the roads becomes an issue. And that's why, again, we are making use of the cloud services for improving the transport infrastructure. 
So these are some of the recommendations which I have from this session that we need to move to the green transportation. And of course, our government of India is also emphasizing towards the green transportation. For that, we have to uh, chalk a very planned approach. We cannot just move with uh, a very, you know, like a, a separate kind of a, uh, you can say, working system. So we need to uh, come together and we need to emphasize on this. Then uh, other recommendation is that we have to bring these kind of different uh, projects which can actually integrate our road, rail, and coastal area utilization. Apart from this, mobility need to be sustainable, as these are the recommendations which I am presenting before all the honorary members and, of course, delegates from different industry and the academia. Then electrification of transport, which Mr. Uh, Ashish was also quoting, that they are aiming for 80% of bus electric mobility, and that's a very praiseworthy effort. And then uh, more cycling paths, which I really found very, very missing element in our country. Because cycling paths you can very well find in Japan, in European countries also. But in India, we are not able to develop this cycling path. And this will definitely uh, maybe reduce the pollution. And of course, the, we can actually be able to utilize the energy consumption also effectively. Then building strong infrastructure, as I said, to cope with the climate change. Because we are talking about that ozone layer depletion is there and a lot of carbon emissions vehicles are being you know, moved in our countries. So we need to bring those, of course, uh, infrastructure, we have to develop those transport infrastructure which can actually reduce these kind of emission elements, CO2 emission elements, and it can bring a big transformation in the climate also. Because at the individual level, we cannot do. Again, as a system, if the governance, strong governance is there, definitely every individual can cooperate. In all other countries, if we talk about the developed countries, there the individuals are working because the governance is there. So we need to bring that kind of a strong governance, which can actually change the whole, you know, you can say implementation part at the individual level also in our country. Then, of course, invest in the technology, as I said, because in Japan, if you see in China also, they are bringing a lot of technology, which can reduce, you know, on uh, these kind of towers, which they are installing to reduce the CO2 emissions. So that can also be done. And then 360 degree framework for transforming, transforming the transport infrastructure. Because 360 degree framework says that every rail, uh, you can say, uh, transport infrastructure holders, you know, position holders, the ministry which is taking care of the rail part, the sea coastal part, and the road part, they all have to come together and they have to bring some kind of a framework. They have to develop that kind of a framework which can transform the transport infrastructure. And that can also be actually very uh, well considered to be a, the full use of the sustainable marketing efforts. Because uh, we are talking, even uh, UN 2030, if I talk about, they are also emphasizing on the sustainable marketing part. But again, these all are documented part. You know, when I sit, uh, see at the uh, country level, again, most of the countries are not able to develop this kind of infrastructure. So this is a big recommendation from my part. Thank you so much to all the members. And if any question is there, I am ready to answer that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. And I would now request uh, Ms. Mamta Shah to kindly do the honors of presenting mementos as a token of gratitude and appreciation to all our eminent speakers. We present to Sri Ashish Kundraji, Honorable Chief Guest, Principal Secretary and Transport Commissioner, Government of Delhi. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for sparing your valuable time and being here with us today. We present to Sri Vinay Kumar Singh, Managing Director, NCRTC. Thank you once again, sir, for being here with us today. And we present to Professor Dr. Surbhi Singh, GL Bajaj Institute of Management and Research. Thank you very much indeed. And before we close the proceedings of the inaugural session, may I request all our eminent dignitaries for a group photograph in the front. Thank you very much indeed. And ladies and gentlemen, with that, we now break for tea. The tea break will be of 15 minutes only. We would request you to be back in time and be seated for the next session, which is a panel discussion session. Also, all those delegates who had registered and could not uh, get their delegate back may kindly collect it from the registration counter outside during the tea break. Thank you. 
And if any of our speakers have presentations, they can load them 